Here we are. First light rides rocking water, stone blooms brushed by wind rush on sky and the crackers. Herbs and bone illumine dark earth where blue stars sleep under the candles of Alcamilla. So this is the gateless gate uh, in Cornwall. We lived there for eight years. And there is the sea in Cornwall. Uh, so this was taken by my daughter Rowena, uh, southwest tip of Cornwall. Uh, but I'm going to go back some centuries to Dogen, the Zen Buddhist philosopher who said, to advance your own experience unto the world of phenomena is delusion. When the world of phenomena comes forth and experiences itself, it is enlightenment. And there I am with Megan. Uh, so we have lived our lives by water on one peninsula and another. In a peninsular place, the clarity of light is partly what lures the lover of land and water. I have gardened and farmed on the Land's End Peninsula of Cornwall and on the South Fork of Long Island, where the light, especially in spring and autumn, transforms the landscape. And then come Connie and Bill. No, uh, they are known very well to the parish. Uh, Bill is a sculptor, and Connie is uh, a painter. Uh, Megan, my wife's mother, and, uh, and her husband. There are the kids. So there's Levin and Liam and Rowena. And Levin's name means lightning. I realized that on the way up here. How about that? <laughs> OK. So, and here is a poem to the kids. Slowly, slowly from the city of learning, I return to spring air and stone above a strong, articulate bay. I read, but cannot write of a winter world away, away. March, come calm to this land of stone and spray. Come my May child to be, touch this wild clarity, give, give with a temperance intense as elusive love, live, live. Oh boy, Quail Hill Farm, here we are. So uh, the first CSA in, uh, in uh, New York State. Uh, this is our 23rd season. 250 families come to harvest their own vegetables. And um, there it is. Meadow man, house scholar, from field to chair, I hear the deep choir of the anvil, iron and rust, iron and dust. Then Nordic beet breaks to summer, willows wave, elderberry beads gift the cloud, dog rose shades the shore. In a measure of rage, I know the weightlessness of innocence. At dawn, silken nursery tents spin the field to song. See air, violet, betony stare, shake the man to make of breath a mortal joy. We enter the story of a place like Quail Hill now through a pattern of lives that meet to form a collective response to soil, flower, and fruit. The narrative is revised and enlarged when a hand reaches to cut some cosmos, when someone kneels to pluck a ripe Rosa Bianca. Another hand whisks away pigweed or lamb's quarters. A worker's hoe stirs soil at the base of broccoli. This is the cultivation of a sense of place. To cultivate is also to expand the boundaries of home, to enter into conversation with the ground of being and with garlic. So that's Matthew. We only bring people onto the farm who are extremely hard workers. As you can tell, Matthew is. <laughs> this is the primary requirement to be an apprentice on Quail Hill Farm. Take up this position for seven of eight hours of the day. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's Jerome. That is Jerome. So that's another 48-year-old apprentice. So uh, truly, <laughs> this is what you this is the, these are the new farmers of America right here. Um, and it's garlic that he's dealing with. This is Julia, who is uh, uh, choosing a tomato, to taste a tomato at the tomato tasting. So we have all kinds of events to bring people uh, of ages 5 to 80 to the farm and to learn about community and working with soil and all that sort of thing. And uh, there I am. I put this one in there because I am uh, sowing spinach at the beginning of spring. I'll be doing this in the next couple days. And this particular 
uh, photograph shows up on the a tiny little image on the back of a, a book about CSAs in Japan, just to show how we're all linked. I'm very proud of that fact, really. Um, the soil, okay, uh, peas in the soil. Um, Miriam McGillis, um, who started Genesis Farm in New Jersey, said that the real health of a bioregion resides in the top six inches of soil. And really what we're doing, everything else is encompassed into this, but we're building up the health of the soil. Uh, potatoes for my mom, who was born in Ireland. Someone asked us, you know, we grow about 20 different varieties of potatoes, and they said, why do you grow so many potatoes? And I said, it's because my mother was born in Ireland, and that's that, and so we've got lots of <laughs> potatoes. Bluebirds, okay. Oh, boy. Thing is, these are so fast, the poems are actually longer than the slides. The bluebirds. Okay. In boxed hives and hollows, Apis mellifera survive on the nectar of aster and goldenrod, transformed and capped in waxen cells, food for the queen of Inscape, part of the golden language of renewal. The sun's breath above winter grains lights the hawk's wings, and yes, the wings of workers within the hive. Rye survives the season of frost, and sky takes on the color of a bluebird. The strong song tows us long, ear sick, blind we follow. Rain slant, spray flick to fields we do not know. Night, float us, offshore wind, shout. Ask the sea what's lost, what's left, what horns sunk, what crown adrift. Where we are, who knows of kings who sup while day fails, who swing his axe to fell kings, guesses where we go. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 <laughs>